me see if everything's working. It's my first time doing a live stream. All right, cool. I think everything's working. We'll see. <laughs> um, one thing. There we go. Um, okay. I think we're good to go. Oh, that's weird. You can see. Y'all can see the chat widget if I move it to a specific place. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's weird. Okay. Um. Sorry, still trying to figure this streaming stuff out. I also need to snag a page from somewhere else on my computer so I can actually execute these trades. All right, how do I figure this crap out? Okay. Okay, perfect. I don't think I've doxed any info that I don't want to dox. So we're just going to start talking about the um, market for a minute. So Saturday morning, doing a little bit of Saturday morning trading, which I probably shouldn't be doing because the market has been just insanely volatile and unpredictable. Um, so Bitcoin itself has just been, it, what it looks like is like it's super illiquid. So we've had just liquidations to the upside and the downside. We wiped like 90% of OI on this huge wick right here, which happened, like you see it on the daily and it doesn't look that insane. But then you go down to the 15 minute and you realize that it happened in like 30 minutes, like 45 minutes. So it was pretty wild. I was here for it. I actually got a really nice long on say, um, which is funny because price is back where I longed, but um, Basically, what happened was, say, came out of this really great daily support, and like anyone who had, um, who had like stink bids sitting down here, absolutely crushed. They snagged like thirty percent. Oh my gosh, they snagged fifty percent <laughs> in four hours. Pretty ridiculous. I did not have bids down there, unfortunately, um, but I did long once it recovered the four hour trend so this four hour candle hadn't closed yet and it was it basically had gone down here and then it was sitting right at the four hour close so i was like okay i have a relatively decent invalidation if it just doesn't hold this four hour close then i'll exit of course i wish i had entered lower but um i didn't so i longed like right there basically on the four hour close i mean on the four hour trend and then proceeded to snag like 30% that day because I did I ended up selling up here my margin position um, also on the 50k to 1 mil challenge account we close our say long that position we opened a while back we opened it down here at 0.23 so the trade there was basically 0.23 and we closed it at 0.77 so it was that which was 230% fantastic um, and since Obviously, price has gone down. It looks like we sold effectively the top. Obviously, we didn't sell literally 0.88, but we sold within like 10% of the top, which I'm super happy about. So, really good trade. We snagged like that was that's all transparent live on the uh, 50k to 1 mil challenge account. So, it was a $10,000 position that we rode to like 23k um, profit. So, the total position turned into like 33 grand um, and we sold to profit uh, 23,000. So pretty nice trade there. Um, Tia, we sold, <laughs> guess where we sold? Quite literally like right here. It was so unfortunate. Um, I don't think it was, I think it was before this liquidation candle. So maybe it was over here somewhere, but we sold before a like 30% day. Yeah, brutal. Um, but it was just because we wanted to take some risk off the table going into the ETF because whether you, I mean, some people are bullish uh, short term. Some people think it's a sell the news event. Um, what we can all agree on is that 
none of us know. <laughs> We're all just guessing. So uh, in the challenge account, at least we had like, we had like nearly a hundred percent gain like portfolio wide gain that was unrealized and so i just wasn't comfortable holding that into an event that i frankly just don't know what's going to happen and anyone who is confident in an opinion one way or the other just doesn't know what they're talking about so we um we just closed every position we had except for the uh, echelon prime position which we're going to hold for a couple years um and of course we were happy about the say sell because it's down like 15 to 20 percent from where we sold um, but the opposite for Tia, Tia is up like 20% from where we sold. I think we sold somewhere like that. So yeah, it's up like 20% from where we sold. Um, luckily on my personal account, I had both a, I had a Tia margin long from way down here and I closed it at 16.25, which was like, again, effectively the top. That was one of my best trades of the month. Um, and gosh, I forgot what we were supposed to be talking about the stream, which is I have a long right now on Jito. I've been talking about Jito for a while, how I think that at some point Jito is going to run several hundred percent. And I've tried this trade several times and gotten stopped every time. Um, and of course, as it as it always seems to go, um, I miss as many as many trades as I've tried on Jito. I miss the 20 percent move. It's literally up 16 percent on the day. Um, but I took a trade, um, and basically the trade here is the, so on the four hour, so first we'll start, yeah, we'll start at the four hour. So basically the, the idea here is this four hour, um, if this four hour will close above this level right here, that's marked with the, let me move this out of the way just so it's easier to see. Um, if it closes above this line in my view, this is like a four hour reclaim and Four hour reclaim is pretty significant. Um, I would expect a trend to start on the four hour. Um, and so we entered on the one hour basically. So you have you have this, pr what I would consider a weak level over here where it's this low and then we retested it right there. Um, and so basically we closed above that on the one hour. And so I said, well, this is a weak level, but I'm gonna bid it. And if we close below it, that'll be my signal to get out. And that's the trade we took. So we entered right there, which, what do you know, ended up being a pretty solid entry, at least it looks to be right now. Obviously, that can dramatically change over time. But right now, we're in profit. And first level of uh, struggle that we expect is like 202, basically two bucks flat, which is the top of this range over here. But that's, that's basically like a, a concern on the one hour time frame. On the four hour time frame, that's that's just not a concern like the, this two dollar number it's it's still the top of the range but this reclaim will be so significant that i think it'll trigger a, a larger time frame trend and so i'm not i'm not too concerned about this i think the real area to start you know being scared if the scared about this long is going to be this uh origin of this down move right here because it's just always our significant levels um it's a type of level that people often fail to recognize as significant and that's it right there basically so first level that we need to reclaim is right here if the four hour that closes in 24 minutes doesn't reclaim this i'm just that's invalidation to me i'm not maybe it continues going up i don't care um the trade is too unclear for me um it would look like a four hour rejection um so i'm not interested in being in that trade i'll just find something else to do if the four hour closes above that the next level that I would look for in terms of like taking profit would be 2.2, which is a very significant move. We're talking about 20%. Um, and the hope though, is that this is the move that I've been trying to catch, which the move, <laughs> um, if I'm right that there will be a move is that this thing basically just V recovers to like three, four, 3.4 which would obviously be a significant move. That'd be 90%. So that would be sick. Um, and the hope is that that is what has started with this 16% day. Um, it has gotten obliterated. I mean, holy crap. Everyone has gotten wiped out on this thing. So um, I think it makes sense that this might be the time that it actually reverses and um, we see the move that I've been trying to catch. 
let's look at everything else. Inge, Inge, I was thinking about a long up here if we had reclaimed this level, but obviously it got Omega rejected. So um, I think Inge is going to break this trend line and see like a pretty significant impulse move, basically following what Tia did the other day. Um, something ridiculous like that. I kind of expect that to happen on Inge, but um, question is when, because you would have thought, I mean, it's had like four attempts at that basically. Um, and if you had longed up here, you're just getting smacked. Obviously, ideally, you can catch a long from down here, which I need to mark this level down here. That's basically become the new range low because this thing's been trading so bizarrely. Like that level really hasn't been very relevant. So right now it looks like traders try to try to catch something like that. Um, but frankly, I don't love it. Um, especially with as volatile as Bitcoin has been. Like you can just, I mean, you see these these spikes in both directions. Like if you're using margin, you're just gonna get liquidated on any of those moves basically, unless you're like two X long. Like that, how big is that move? That's a 16% move. Like even if you're just, you know, I mean, you're coming, you're, you're cutting it close even on five X leverage. So um, it's all pretty scary right now. But um, yeah, so right now Tia looks pretty bad. Um, it looks like it's deviated. It deviated the previous high already. And it looks like it's going to deviate into the broader range. So you would expect, you know, range lows, which at like 11.5. Um, so don't love how Tia looks. I still have my staked Tia and I'm not touching that position for a long time. Uh, I expect airdrops to come and those will subsidize any, you know, downward price action that we see. Um, check back on Gito again. We got like 20 minutes until this closes, so um, hopefully we get some sort of impulse move that will make the close, you know, clearly bullish. Because you don't want some sort of ambiguous close where it closes like right at the level, and um, you know everybody's trying to question whether that's a reclaim or not. But as of now, we can close in profit just a little bit. Um, I'm checking, I have my actual trading window open on the side. I'm trying to see where the position actually is. Yeah, it's up like 10%, it's not a big deal. We really do need this to turn into a significant move or it's just gonna be, be too boring. All right. See what people are saying on Twitter. <laughs> What's Pintoshi saying? I set up some of my Solana phones today, which was fun, claiming my, uh, claiming all my airdrops. Got bonk and grass and access and et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully much more to come. If you don't follow Taiki, by the way, great follow. Highly suggest. He's like a fundamental researcher for the most part. Um, and if you know, like, just a little bit of technical analysis, you combine it with, you know, his fundamental, <coughs> excuse me, his fundamental analysis, and it's super helpful. His YouTube channel as well. Actually, one of my inspirations to uh, uh, get started on YouTube. How much are you down from it? If you like thought this breakout was happening. Like five percent. Bollinger bands 
guy actually predicted that uh, this was going to break to the upside, which was pretty interesting because he doesn't make directional calls a lot of the time. Bollinger Bands, John Bollinger, he's the creator of the technical analysis indicator Bollinger Bands, which is like pretty widely used in lots of different industries. It's kind of a well-known indicator, but um, he just kind of hangs out on Twitter, some t- specifically on crypto Twitter at times. And he came out, like I think it was yesterday, it might have been the day before, saying that he thinks this breaks to the upside. Which is pretty cool. It probably does. It probably we probably get some, you know, ETF day of pump where we like pump into like fifty K or something. You know, something stupid, illiquid, rapid move. Um, I think it ultimately gets sold into and we retrace the move, um, and then go down, but who knows? Trying to decide what I think about inch, whether I actually want to bid this level or not. It's been tested like six times, but it also got deviated, so. Oh. I really shouldn't even be playing around with alts right now, given Bitcoin's volatility. And like there's a few times where I didn't have a position open, and had I had a position open, I just would have got smacked. Like any of these on Tia, you can see it. Like I mean, any of these types of moves, you're just getting liquidated. I mean, and you, like you can basically like face that risk at any point right now because the market's just so weird. Like anybody comes out with any any information about the ETF, if it's bullish, it just giga pumps like Bitcoin pumps like five percent in an hour or something stupid, and then if it's bearish, you get some stupid wick like this. Which on Bitcoin you can probably be fine, but like on altcoins you're just getting smoked. Say is still going down. Yeah. Very happy about the sell on Say. I actually tweeted. So, although in the challenge account, I sold Say basically at the top. And then I sold Tia basically at the bottom. But on my Twitter account, I basically, I made a tweet. I'll find it. Basically saying that I felt like the Say run was coming to an end and that uh, it was time for Tia to pump. Yeah, so this was my tweet, basically saying, you know, down here at 12.2 something, basically said that, you know, Say's stolen the spotlight um, for a while, and I think it's coming to an end, because I predicted that Say was going to steal the spotlight, and Tia was going to chop for a while. Tia was up, you know, it, it had just been at like 14 bucks, and I said, I think this chills for a bit while Say runs. It consolidated in there. Obviously, that's what you see right here. Say pulled like a a triple, absolutely ran. And then I tweeted saying, um, I think Say's time has uh, passed and I think it's time for Tia to run. That was when Say was up here and Tia was right. It was literally right here where I tweeted that and Tia pumped like 30%. So that's, that's that was the reason why I caught this on like a short-term margin long. Um, even though I sold it on the challenge account, which I shouldn't have. That was, that was a, I might explain that error in thinking because I know what it was. Um, I've done it before and it's something I got to address. Basically it's when, um, I like form a, form a thesis where, so I basically have like form a thesis broadly. And then I, instead of applying that thesis, you know, independently to each asset, I just sort of blanket the thesis. So basically I was like, I think it's too risky to go into the ETF with these, with all this unrealized profit and all these altcoin holdings. Like I'd rather just um, sit out and watch how things play out and then I can, you know, reevaluate after. That's why I like formed that idea. And then I just like blanket, just applied that to all my holdings AKA selling all the holdings and real, and th- the right way to do that is to just be more patient just to say, um, like, I think that like, this is my thesis and I go asset by asset and say like, is this a good time to execute that thesis basically? And if I had done that, I would have gone to Tia and said, no, I definitely shouldn't sell Tia right now. Like it's been consolidating after a huge move up. Um, and I think there's time in between now and the ETF approval for some bullish price action to occur. So I'm going to give it a chance for that or at least sell the top of the range because we I sold at the bottom of the range. So that was sort of the 
mental error that I made. Um, it obviously worked well on Say, and then I, it bit me in the butt on Tia. So that's something I've done before, and I need to be better about. Uh, let's not look at my notifications on stream. Rookie, pay group leader, not the same guy, of course, just happened to be uh, so similar. Um, he has absolutely crushed like the last three months. December specifically, though, let's see if he his PNLs in here because he made like two mil in December or something. It's been absurd. Oh gosh, where is it? I know it's in here. Um, that guy, man, he tweets so freaking much. I don't know how it's. I don't know how I haven't found it yet. But anyways, he posts his PNL on his private account, and holy crap, he made like, I think it was like two mil in December. I wish I could find it so I could verify that because I. I'm not sure that's the exact number, but anyways, he's been unbelievably impressive. Oh. Let's check on everything again. We haven't look, been looking at the charts. We got 11 minutes until four hour close. So Tia, Tia looks pretty, pretty terrible. Um, it's at this low. If we get below this low, it's lights out. It's almost certainly going back to like 11.5. You don't want to see, so the reason this is this looks bad, I guess I'll explain my reasoning for why this looks bad, is because all-time high breakouts are supposed to be extremely bullish. Um, like, when something breaks out it, from its all-time high, it should just, it should give no one an entry. Like, it, everyone should suddenly feel the need to own this token, and be like, oh my gosh, can't believe I don't own Tia, it just broke all-time high. And no one should be able to get the entry that they want. It should just move. It should just continue to move and everyone gets left behind. Tia has like hung around its all-time high for way too long. It actually, so that, like technically the Pico all-time high is this right here. It quickly came back below that. And now, like if you wanted to, basically if you like really wanted to be bullish on this thing, you just kind of try to ignore the fact that it came back below its all-time high and say, well, it's just retesting the top of this range, this consolidation range. At the moment, it's about to deviate back into this range yet again. It did it already and broke back out, which, you know, you could have been pretty bullish at that moment. But it looks like we're about to have an hourly close back in this range and even a four hour close back in this range, which is which is not pretty. I mean, that's just like textbook bearish setup and you expect bottom of the range to get hit, which is like 11.5. Pretty rough as a Tia holder. Like I, I really wish this would um I really wish this would go up while I am farming the airdrops, but it doesn't do what I want it to do. Say so, still getting smoked. I think it goes down here and then sees some bid. Um I think you can long somewhere in this box. Like my plan will be wait for price to get into this box and then I'll go down to the one hour and get some setup on the one hour. And the, the trade will basically be, you know, from the, down in this green box somewhere to uh, somewhere up here. I don't know exactly. Probably just the highs, something like that. So that's a huge move. That's actually crazy. That'd be a 50% move if you call it that. It's been so volatile and run so hard. The moves on it in both directions are just huge. Um, a lot of the coins I'm not talking about, like Soul, they're just so boring. Like Soul... I mean, it just looks bad, right? This is obviously a downtrend. The next, you know, significant level of support is at 80. Um, you can hope it gets bid based on this consolidation over here, which is what's happening currently. So, like, if you wanted to try to catch a move, this isn't the worst time. To me, that's not a good enough level for me to try. I mean, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. This is a decent level where it's at, like, right now. So... Um, you could look for a, a setup around here, and if you got it, then take it and hope you get to ride it up to uh, 116. That would be the target. If you want, like, the full range low to range high trade to go on, basically do this, which is a good move, like 20%. 
invalidation would be like a four hour close below this level basically um unless you get some other setup like you get down to one hour and you can like bid a one hour order block or something um but i'm just not that interested to be frank render i haven't looked at render it's getting smoked goodness yeah i'm glad i sold this on the challenge account it looks good on the weekly um like it, it is full on broken out on the weekly it's actually testing weekly support but on lower time frames it looks terrible i'll pull up the render bitcoin chart oof that's not what you want to see right there so the reason i bought this in the challenge account was because of these weekly closes above the this weekly level and it's gotten smashed to the point that it's back below that level so i'm extremely glad that i got out of that that was garbage um mina the, it's pretty boring at the moment op op actually looks great on the weekly it's just a weekly retest daily retest as well so I think this this is actually probably one of the better coins right now if you wanted to look for something four hour support as well so you love to see like confluential levels from weekly daily four hour that's basically what you have right here so um this is probably the single best long that i've looked at since we you know started the stream is this right here and i wouldn't i personally wouldn't be selling this i think it probably just breaks out it's been tested a couple times and it's at all-time high all-time highs, you don't really look for a long consolidation after an all-time high break. It should just continue, as I talked about earlier. So, OP is probably one of the best-looking ones right now. Um, Gito looks like we're going to get rejected, unfortunately. We have five minutes until the 4-hour close, and it's not going to close above our level. So, I'm actually... I probably don't recommend this, but I'm going to go ahead and close that out, because... I don't think it's going to recover that level in the next five minutes. Um, and we're only, we're barely, we're barely down. Close. Yeah, we close that out. All right. We'll look for another one. I wish that was going to play out, but. It even looks like it's going to hold our one hour level. So, I mean. It very well might just move after this four hour close, even though the four hour close isn't clear. Um, it still could just it still could just do it anyways. I'll I'll keep an eye on it and see if we can get another get another trade. Um, so Prime, I should talk about Prime probably. Prime looks pretty bad um, on like lower time frames. Obviously on like the weekly, it just looks outstanding. Like. I mean, it looks like it's just going to follow this trend line to infinity, like 50 bucks or something in the next, you know, year. That'd be amazing, obviously, considering on the challenge account, our entry is like 2.8. So if it, let's look at where it'll be at the end of 24, if it holds this trend line. So we bought 2.8. We're talking about November, December. So it'd be up like, call it 10x. We both like be up like 10x by the end of 2024, assuming this trend line holds. Obviously, it doesn't have to; it could break. But on lower time frames, it looks pretty bad. Like daily broke out. I mean, broke down from this. That's not really a daily trend line, but it's more like a four-hour trend line. It broke down, so I think it probably goes back down to this level that I have down here, which is this daily support at like 6.75. Um, I think we probably get that. It might stop in this sort of area because this was this thing doesn't trade very technically because the liquidity on centralized exchanges is terrible. But there is this like weird level like right in there. So maybe it you know, maybe this is the bottom, it holds and then moves back up, but I'm mentally prepared to see it back down here at like six point seven five. I don't think it goes below there though. Could be wrong, but that would be a pretty pretty strong level. This is also weekly support. <laughs> That's hilarious. That green box I just marked is like exactly weekly support. So um, maybe I'm a little too bearish on it. Obviously, long term, I'm extremely bullish on it. Um, I'm just talking about like short term time, short term price action. Um, hey, what's up? I just realized I have a comment and I haven't been paying attention to the chat. Um, what's up, Neil Porter? What's your view on holding like 50 coins at around 1K instead of a few high conviction bets? 
recently sold my BTC and some ETH to find some mid cap plays to hold over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, so the question is basically like concentrated bets versus like a shotgun approach where you just like buy a crap load of assets and uh, that's like the VC method, right? Like venture capital firms, they just buy like, they'll invest in like 500 projects and they hope that like a couple of them give them a thousand X and it'll make up for all their other investments that fail. Um, as someone with a smaller portfolio, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend concentrated bets, um, but it also kind of depends on your confidence in your analysis. So like me personally, I'm very confident that I can find the top performers for the next like three to six months. And I would rather just buy three of those instead of, you know, shotgun out and buy like 50 different assets. But not everyone's confident in their ability to find those outperformers. Um, and if you're not, then, you know, like if you, maybe if you, like I do this basically full time. So if you don't have the time to like do that research and you're worried that you're going to only like if you pick three you run the risk of picking three bad coins like that's a, that's a real risk and that would be pretty painful um so like if that's your your worry then um maybe you can shotgun it i don't really like it though like if you're going to shotgun it because of your basically lack of confidence in picking the right coins i would suggest you just like focus on the majors like just buy um like just go all in eth or like just go big on Solana or something like that. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I just am not a big fan of the whole shotgun approach. Chat just disappeared. I don't know why. I don't know how to do this crap. Live chat close. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. The knowledge of finding high conviction isn't there for me. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I do think though, so like the solution, if you don't feel confident in finding the best altcoins, it's not, I think you're probably, because you're going to miss a lot if you shotgun altcoins, I think like the expected value is pretty similar to just going heavy into like Ethereum or Solana or some other, you know, established altcoin that you're bullish on. So I, again, am probably just not that big of a fan. And, and if, if you have the time, like the best return you're going to get in the market if, is like airdrops. So just like combine your capital with some time. Um, obviously, time is caught like that's a cost that you have to invest. But if you're a small portfolio, taking your capital and combining it with time um, and, you know, actually taking action and engaging with protocols, um, that's by far the uh like the highest um, upside play that you can take is just farming airdrops. Like it's not even close. Oh man. Oh, did Gita just get smacked? Yes, it did. Holy cow. I'm glad we closed before the four hour. <laughs> yeah, it got Omega rejected and that looks pretty horrible now. So pretty glad we got out of that. Hey, bud, you need to grab some ass for the long term. Been talking about it since four cents and number and no one has been listening. Um, I don't really love when somebody's username includes a crypto asset, Aster Whale. Um, I think that makes it pretty difficult for you to objectively analyze the asset. And you probably have, you know, some portion of your identity baked into being a supporter of that asset. So, um we can pull it up. I'll, I'll see what it is. I've never heard of it. Oh, man. What are your favorite airdrops? Favorite airdrops. Um, so the Solana ecosystem airdrops are going to be balling. But at this point, it's kind of late. Like the Jito airdrop was huge. Um, the Jupiter airdrop has already been snapshotted. Although there's going to be a, a second round of, G of Jupiter airdrop. So I think Jupiter is probably still worth farming. Tensor is the um, NFT marketplace on Solana. They're going to airdrop. And again, um, like people have been farming that for a while. So I think um, um, I think it's still a good one, but it's slightly late. Um, I think probably the best airdrops right now are going to be in the Cosmos ecosystem. Right now, the Cosmos ecosystem seems like sort of the, uh, the second or, you know, one of the two most um, 
promising ecosystems right now, Solana being, you know, one of the two, you can say Cosmos is one or Solana is one, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But I think the Cosmos ecosystem airdrops, that's why I'm so bullish on staking Tia for airdrops. Um, Cause I think you're going to get airdrops from a lot of really good projects. So in probably staking injective as well, staking Atom. Um, what else is there? There's a whole bunch of assets you can stake. Um, and I think engaging in the protocols, like, you know, doing transactions on injective chain is also, you got you know, going to help your airdrops as well. So probably injective or, or cosmos rather. So cosmos, um, ecosystem, more specifically stuff like, um, Manta, um, Manta is like, a to be honest, I haven't done a lot of research on it because it, it looks slightly scammy, but a lot of people are bullish on the mana airdrop because they're up front that they're going to do an airdrop. So Manta, look into that. Um, Celestia, you can stake Tia and get um, airdrops from projects that utilize Celestia for data avail availability. Staking Injective, and you can also bridge to Injective and do um, transactions on there and interact with the dApps that are already on there. One of them has a, a points program already. So um like that's i mean that's kind of like them saying they're going to airdrop obviously they don't have to but it'd be pretty scammy if they have a point system and then they never airdrop um those are probably the best airdrops that i know about um right now um trying to catch up on comments neil porter how do you find out about airdrops make you do a vid on it yeah um the way that I find out about airdrops is mostly through Twitter. Um, obviously, airdrops is like the big topic on YouTube right now. I mean, every single crypto YouTuber is just posting like five airdrop videos a day, it seems like. Because um, airdrops, I mean, they're a great opportunity. So I don't, I mean, I don't really blame them. But to be honest, to be honest, like, the airdrops that you are going to get the biggest payout from are going to be the ones that like people aren't making YouTube videos about. Cause once people are making YouTube videos about them, it means there's a ton of people participating in that farming and it's going to dilute the airdrop. So one of the best ways is to like look at what test nets are currently launched because test nets, um, usually in, in interacting with a test net is going to qualify you for an airdrop, but that also is like indicative that a, a, a um, mainnet launch is coming in the future um and so you basically just need to look into what um test nets are live and then analyze the project decide if you're bullish on it and the ones that you're most bullish on you go interact with those i know that's kind of a complicated answer and it's not just like a i would go look at this big list of airdrops and start working on it um but that's how you find the best airdrops obviously you can just do the very basic stuff like all the known stuff like zk sync is a known future airdrop, Linea is a known future airdrop, Injective, Celestia. Obviously, I'm not saying you're gonna get Celestia and, air, and Injective airdropped. Like, you're not gonna get dropped those tokens, but participating on those chains and staking those tokens will get you other airdrops, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Solana ecosystem airdrops are well known. Like, those are gonna happen. Ju uh, Jupiter is coming and um, Tensor is coming. There's some other ones like Kamina or something like that. It's like a lending protocol, if I remember right. Um, so there's lots of known ones. Like it's very simple. You can go get some airdrops. It's not that hard. Um, but um, the highest return ones are going to be ones that people aren't focused on so much. Um, do you have to stake with a particular validator for Tia? I don't think you have to stake with a particular validator. I would suggest doing it through your Kepler wallet. I don't know what the honestly don't know what the alternatives are. Like where else you can stake it, but I would do it with Kepler wallet. And then um, to increase the likelihood that you get airdrops and likely increase the size of the airdrops, stake with some lower ranked validators. So like, um, I think I can pull it up. Um, I'd rather not type in my password on streams. Um, basically when you select the validators, just go down like 10 to 15 slots because um, it's possible that they're gonna incentivize more decentralization by um, sending bigger airdrops to the less congested validators, if that makes sense. Helix is a DEX for injective. If, you, if you're in there, act with it a lot. You may call for, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I think the big, I mean, the best thing you can do is when you see like an L1 token doing well, go actually just bridge to the chain. Like you, like say, say um, has been pumping 
and you can bridge to say and actually like transact on it. I think that's a great idea. You can bridge to injective and you can go make swaps on different DEXs. You can lend. There's a place called like Black Panther where you can deposit some capital. Just doing that type of stuff is the best thing to do. Follow you on Twitter already. Any other major airdrop? And, oh, accounts I recommend. Yeah, bro. There's like a million great Twitter accounts. Um, let me... Um, I mean, Ansem is like Mr. Crypto Twitter right now, so he's a great follow. I have his notifications on. He's great. Um, he tweets a ton, so you're going to get absolutely bombarded with tweets. Um, but he posts a lot of good stuff. Um, let me pull up my list. I, I don't even know which icon is list usually. Um, yeah, so my trading list, this is for like mostly technical analysis related stuff. Um, Salience, XBT, great follow, GCR, Tree of Alpha. He doesn't tweet anymore, but um, Tub Wiener, if you can get a follow, he's locked, but if you can follow him, that'd be great. Pull to Poly, great follow. Sisyphus, great follow. Keyboard Monkey, decent follow. He does mostly sports betting right now, but um, Owlwatt, great trader. Um, um, Kirby's a good follow. Pintoshi, I mean, Everybody kind of knows Pintoji. He's a great follow. Um, Adam, he's like a, he's probably like the main educator in the space of like um, order flow trading. So good follow. CL the cat, got to follow him. Hentai Avenger, got to follow him. Um, I mentioned one of Hentai Avenger's alts in the, you know, up higher up here. I'm not going to say which one it is because I don't know if he like wants it private or whatever. But he has an alt that I said you should follow above. Um, Magus, great. Order Flow Trader as well. Loma, great. Um, Hedgehog, Nanny, Peach, all great. Hasaka, I mean, Hasaka's like, he literally moves markets. Uh, you got to be following Hasaka. I feel like that's just kind of like a must. All these guys are good. Don't Anyone on this list, I have them on this list for a reason. But um, I'm just pointing out the like especially good ones that I feel like you can actually get a lot of value from. Donald is a must follow. Um, single best trader over the last 12 months, and it's not debatable. Ledger status, obviously great follow. Super chillin, great follow. Ethereum 007 is his username. Avi Fellman, good. Loom Dark, good. Trader Main, got to follow him. Rookie, um, Rookie XPT, made like 2 mil in December, <laughs> and it's all public. Um, pretty wild. Again, these are all good followers. Obviously, you got to be following Kobe. He doesn't tweet much right now because he's working on a project, but um, you should be following him. Salsa Tequila, he's like an OG scalper type guy. He's a good follow. Uh, again, Black Noise. Jim Talbot, another cat. CT loves some cats. Um, you should be following him. I Am Nomad, he's like a another like market mover whale. Um, he's legit. Runner XPT, another great follow. Runner is like a, he has a YouTube channel now. And he teaches like order flow stuff. He scalps and he's he's just a good guy. I highly suggest following him. Um, that's Those are all like traders. I'm trying to think, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other like category of person that I suggest you follow. There definitely is. Let me, um, let me just like scroll through for a minute and see if I see any that are like maybe like fundamental analysis. Small cap science. He's a good follow for, um, he does a lot of like arbitrages between like a token's value and their treasury backing. So he, he's a good to like diversify your following. I would follow him. Um, st oh, oh, foo. So <laughs> sticks is, um, so he's part of the like whole foo, um, like niche Bitcoin Panda 69. You should be following foo. He's like a higher time frame trader. Um, Super wise guy. He has these alts, Shay and Big Balls Bulla. You can follow all of them. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna quit with the Twitter accounts in a minute. Sat Start is like a classic CT account. Okay, I've, I've oh, and last one. Great last one. Inverse Bra. You got to be following Inverse Bra. Okay, I'm done with the Twitter accounts. There's like a bajillion. Um, I follow you on Twitter, right? I'm already in on Adam, so that's no problem. I always stick with IBC relayers also. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Crypto Wizard is very good. I'm gonna, okay, so I'll go ahead and tell you, I'm gonna judge this account based on the mutual followers I have with it. If there's not a bunch of mutual followers, I'm gonna assume he's sus. 
obviously there's no way I know which one you're referring to because there's a ton of them. Crypto wizard. So this follower to mutual followers ratio is suspicious. Um, he has a crap load of followers. 600K is like a lot. Um, and I only have like 66 mutuals. Um, so he might be a great follow. I mean, 66, 66 is nothing. But for example, if we go to like Hentai Avenger, only 100K followers, and I have 280 mutuals with him. Hentai Avenger's absolute savage. He's like 23 at this point, I think. Worth like, I don't know what he's worth right now. He had like 50 mil at the top of the last cycle, though. He's like, he's legit. Um, <laughs> I, I hate suggesting following him because a lot of his content isn't trade related. It's like, <laughs> obviously, I mean, look at his username. So you got to sort of sort through some of that content if you want to find the signal. But um, yeah, he's a good follow. <laughs> oh, he called Inj at a dollar. Yeah, okay, that's that's legit then. I respect that. I respect it. Inge at a dollar was a fantastic call. Inge kind of kind of recovering. We'll see if it can break out. I'll take the trade if we can get some sort of setup. Everything's kind of kind of recovering right now because Bitcoin Bitcoin actually looks pretty dang good on the lower time frame. We've run into this resistance like a lot of times. We've went through it several times, so I could see this. I could see this breaking up sometime soon. You obviously got some sort. Of, I don't really trade based on trend lines. But she got some sort of like rising wedge or whatever the heck you want to call it. I don't trade. I don't trade patterns like that either. But you got something going on. Um, see how OP. Yeah, OP looks. OP is pretty good right now. Bonk. So bonk is the reason I have been paying a little bit of attention to bonk is because it's at daily support. So I think you do get some sort of recovery, probably up into this green box. I don't think you're going to see any like trend on Bonk anytime soon. It's just run way too hard. And um, I think it's probably just going to consolidate for like six to 12 months. It'll probably go absurd in 2025 though. So I don't think you should forget about it. Yeah, I'll check out ASTR in a second. Is um, Do you get that call from that market? I mean, that crypto wizard guy as well. Um, also, can I ask how you initially found the prime trade? Yeah, Prime, so I've known about Prime since 2021. In 2021, um, I'll check out ASTR in a second. Let me explain Prime. So Prime launched in 2021, and it was like a pretty well-known well known project. Like they, they, um, I mean, everybody knew about them because they had all these NFTs, and their NFTs did really well. Um, and, but they like, the game was under development. And so it was like, everybody like bought these NFTs with the hopes of one day that game is going to launch and it's going to be really sick. But um, it just took a long time. And so the game launched like in the bear market. Then they launched their token in the bear market, their ERC-20. So they had like the NFTs, um, but then they launched like Prime, the, the ERC-20. And basically I was impressed with the fact that they built through the bear market because there's this pattern. Okay, this is actually pretty valuable. So um, there's a pattern that from cycle to cycle, um, sectors that launch in one towards the tail end of one cycle and then projects within that sector continue to build through the bear market those projects crush in the next bull market because basically that sector was like in its infancy in the first cycle and then it becomes developed through the bear market and can fulfill its potential in the next bull market that's kind of what DeFi did from 2017 to 2021 like DeFi was created in like the 2017 cycle and a few projects like synthetics and Aave and compound built through the bear market and then when we got the bull market again in 2021 those projects went like 300x Aave literally went like I think 300x is roughly the number I don't know if I have the Aave chart that goes back that far but anyways that's sort of a recurring pattern so when I saw gaming and like game five metaverse etc take off at the end of the last bull market i immediately started thinking okay this is like a pattern we need to keep an eye on the top builders in this sector through the bear market and that was prime like prime their team's sick their project's sick people actually play the game like stream the game on uh, twitch and stuff like it's very legit and so 
I originally bought it down here at like 1.9 and I sold it up here. And then in the challenge account, our entry was somewhere, I think we bought it right here technically. Uh, so we bought like 2.8 and then it like chopped around for a while before um, like tripling from our entry. I think we're up like 3X. But that's how I, I mean, I found Prime and basically call it 2021, although the token itself wasn't available back then. So my thesis with Prime is basically that gaming is going to actually fulfill its potential in the next cycle. Like everyone got hype about it in 2021. It's not going to actually fulfill itself until like 2025. And Prime is one of the teams that has been building for the longest and has delivered the most. So I'm quite bullish. They also are launching a new game soon called Colony, which implements AI. And so this is going to be like gaming combined with an AI play, which is absurd because those are my two single favorite sectors for 2025. Okay, I said I was going to look at ASTR. I got to do that before I respond to anything else. Aster. Aster market cap is 700 mil. When did it launch? That's my main question when I look and look at these tokens. Looks like it launched. It's hard to say. Looks like it launched like January 2022. So basically super late bull market, like super, like top was already in, but alts continued to run. And what's this multiple it pulled? 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. Yeah, so it just like 3 x and it's been consolidating. Dude, chart chart looks nasty. Like, good. Good nasty. I need to be clear. Chart does look really good. Let's see if we can get it on... Um, let's see if we can get on TradingView. My freaking widget thing's in the way. I hope I can get it on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's everywhere. Um, look at the Coinbase chart. Yeah, okay. So... I would say this chart looks pretty good. Um, I would say it, like it could pull back to this level. So that would be kind of your your risk. Like this is the nearest support that it has. But, or you, you can actually, you can argue that this like micro, this like little consolidation back here is effectively a range. And so maybe the range low of it is where you could look for some sort of support. So you could look like this little daily box right here is what you could consider support if you wanted to. Um, I haven't even uh, like seen what this thing is fundamentally. I'm just looking at it technically for a minute. Um, this looks, I mean, this looks pretty good. It's up a lot, isn't it? Like from, it's up like three X chart looks pretty good. I have no idea what it does. I have no idea what it is, anything, but chart looks decent. Um, it'll look, I mean, if it can get above all time high, it'll, it'll really start cooking. Um, now let's see what it actually is. Um, where's the freaking, there's a link to the website. Website, Aster Network. So it's like a, it's either an L1 or an L2, I assume. Do you have a synopsis for it? Um, you bought it around four cents. That's funny, because that's where I just measured that upside from I literally was down here at, at four cents and measured up here. So you're up like two and a half X. That's really, or three, three and a half X, 250%. So, I mean, you're crushing it in this trade. Don't let me like, I mean, screw what I say. You're crushing it. And it, it, I mean, this to me doesn't scream like you need to get out. This was, I mean, this would have been the place to get out 0.17. Like that was the most obvious next resistance. So I would have taken some profit there and then see if I could buy lower and also rebought if it closed higher than that. But like downside seems fairly limited, so it still looks pretty good to me. But um, it's Astro Network, leading layer one in Japan, EVM and gaming was originally a parachain on DOT, but now they're expecting, yeah. I mean, that all sounds good to me. That all sounds good to me. <laughs> um, obviously I just said I'm bullish gaming. I think EVM is generally a plus, although we are sort of seeing like a shift towards non-EVM with um, Cosmos and Solana being like two of the leading ecosystems, but I would say it looks pretty good. Um, AOs might be an example of that. So AOs, so the thing about it launching in the previous cycle, it needs to have not already had a bull market. So AOs, I'm familiar with AOs. Um, if I remember right, AOs has full on had 
a bull market in 2021. I think it, I, if I'm not mistaken, EOS existed in like 2019, didn't it? Yeah, look, I, I took, I literally took this trade on EOS and then closed it out for break even because I was like, this token's kind of scammy. And then it, it went up. Literally, no joke, it was within three days. It went up two and a half X. Freaking, ref um, that was that was dumb. But that was because I took a trade that I didn't actually have high conviction on. I should have researched it further and I probably could have held on to this trade. But that's where this trade indicator is from is because I actually took a trade on AOs um, whenever this was. I think it was back in, it was in November at some point. But um, Rose and Metis, yeah, the whole Metis ecosystem, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Rose, of the Metis ecosystem, but a lot of my friends are like my group chat, my main group chat that I participate in. They're they're all in Metis. I've never really engaged in it, um, but it is like, what is it? It's probably like the smallest market cap uh, L2 that like has some sort of potential. Um, and like the whole meme that is founded by Metallic's mom is hilarious. I need to recheck on these coins. Um, yeah, Inge not looking too hot, Tia not looking too hot, Say not looking too hot, Soul looks decent, set support, I'm not interested in trading it though, just because I think it's at like a high time frame resistance, like I would take this trade if it were at some high time frame support, but like it ran into literally, I've had this resistance mark for like two years. Like, I'm just not trying to bet on it breaking that right now. It'll break it eventually, but I don't see it happening right now. Um, Gito, still looking bad. That was a pretty ugly rejection. So I'll probably take this trade once we get the four-hour close above there, but it looks terrible right now. Bonk, looking whatever. Still at daily support. Like da It's daily support. So, like, the four hour and the one hour don't matter all that much. Like, you need a daily invalidation for you to not think this thing comes into, like, 0.14-ish. Most of BTC into alts if we get a decent enough pullback on alts. Yeah, um, I actually think it's not the worst time to consider um, basically betting on BTC dominance going down just because the E... ETF approval, like you would expect that to be some sort of top in um, BTC dominance. Um, I do think we probably end up hitting this circle up here at like, it's like 57%, but that probably happens like later in the year, if I had to guess. Like sort of high time frame predictions are pretty useless, but if I were to guess like how the next like 12 months play out, I think... Bitcoin sees like an impulse move up on the ETF approval and then it pulls back and on that pullback altcoins and Ethereum just absolutely rip largely because like once the Bitcoin ETF approval is solidified the next narrative becomes the ETH ETF like that's just a very simple next step so then people you know capital moves from Bitcoin into Ethereum um, which like this is the pattern that we see all the time, right? Everybody knows like the Bitcoin to ETH to alts rotation, but this time there's actually like a narrative reason behind it. So I could see like ETH pumping pretty hard after the ETF um, as BTC like consolidates and pulls back a little bit. And if ETH rips, then altcoins are gonna rip harder basically. So um, like I could see that, you know, having basically making uh, Bitcoin dominance pullback, but I do think like, after we see that like alt season blow off top, that alts are going to get absolutely obliterated, like 60 to 80%. Um, and Bitcoin is going to basically be ranging, chopping at something like, I think so maybe down to like 35K ish, something like that. Um, and that would basically that period of time where alts have blown off top and pull back and Bitcoin is kind of chilling. That's when you could see Bitcoin dominance, um, you know, start to move up towards this level. And this will probably get hit around like, it's like if you look at the past cycles, what I just described happens and then Bitcoin starts to move up towards its all-time high and breaks all-time high while alts do nothing. It's it's painful. Like if you go look at last, last um, basically like Q4 of 2020, Bitcoin breaks all-time high and alts are just doing nothing. <laughs> it's 
is brutal. And let's find that on this chart. So that's basically, that's this run right here. That was what happened here. That's why BTC dominance went up so hard. Bitcoin is literally, um, I got to find a, uh, this one probably goes back far enough. Um, yeah, so like that was September. Um, yeah, that was this period of time, September to December. So that's like 10K to 20K on Bitcoin and alts aren't moving. In fact, most of them are going down. So that's like, um, that's September to December. Let's look at like a good alt from back then. That, um, it's so hard to find charts that go back that far. They're mostly on Binance and I don't trade on Binance. Let me just pull up a new Abe chart and we'll look at what, um, gosh. Okay. That kind of, kind of shows it. So this is October to November while Bitcoin's ripping, Ave pulls back 60%. <laughs> That's while Bitcoin is going up. Like it's brutal. So I, I basically expect a similar thing to happen where like in Q4 of this year, um, Bitcoin like rips to 60K plus and alts are just getting shrecked against it. Like Bitcoin dominance uh, again goes up into that 57-ish percent area. And it might go higher, like I have no idea. Technical analysis on Bitcoin dominance is kind of silly. But this is just, I'm just trying to make whatever levels I can. So it could even go to like 71%. I doubt it, but that's possible. Oh man. Seems like a bit of an opportunity cost holding Bitcoin from now to end of bull. Um, I think that's largely true, but not. I wouldn't say it on such a high time frame. Like now between, between now and end of bull, you're kind of assuming like altcoins are just going to go up against Bitcoin for the next... Next two years, basically, is what you're saying. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to go up against Bitcoin for like a month, and then they're going to get abolished against Bitcoin, like crushed. And then Bitcoin dominance is going to rip again later, and then we'll see the same sort of catch up from the alts. To avoid the stress of constant rotation between Bitcoin and alts, etc., most would do much better with a diversified portfolio of like 50% BTC, ETH plus alts. Yeah, um, it all depends. On, this is something I've been thinking about a lot recently because I just started this YouTube channel recently, and it's it's really difficult for me to like tell people how they should organize their portfolio because like that whole idea of like mitigate your risk by having you know fit half your portfolio in Bitcoin and ETH. That's like nice, but what if someone has like a thousand dollars to invest? And like, if you have a thousand dollars to invest and you follow that portfolio where half your portfolio is in Bitcoin and ETH, that means half your portfolio, your $500 has like a max upside of like a double, basically. Like if you combine the returns, of, we'll, we'll call it a triple. So like you're going to make what, 1500 bucks? Like that doesn't actually have an impact on your life. So I think it's, it's very difficult to give advice on portfolio construction um, because you need so much information. Like you, you really need to know like, what their um like what their salary is like how easily could you just refill your portfolio if you lost all this it's it's all so complicated so like like if you have a thousand bucks i don't think you should own any bitcoin because like it's not gonna make a tangible impact on your life you should you should really just learn how to like do some degen stuff and try to 50x that because like 50k would actually help your life out you know what i mean but yeah if you have like a i think you say like I would say this would be the strategy for like six weeks plus. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I agree for the most part. Yeah, like the bigger you get, um, more your portfolio should sit in like Bitcoin and ETH. Anything under ten figs would just go one hundred percent alts. Ten figs. Ten figs, brother. That's a billion, isn't it? Agree, brother. That's. What's up, C Drom? How long do you think alts hold dominance before BTC comes back in Q4? Um, I mean, I have no idea how long this. So basically what you're asking, like the altcoin season that I'm predicting post ETF approval, like how long does that last? No idea. I mean, it really depends on how hard Bitcoin pulls back. If it pulls back, like if it chops, then that alt season could, I mean, it could go on for one to three months like it could be crazy if bitcoin pulls back hard like 35k within the month then it's going to be like a week like alts are gonna like double in a week and then they're gonna get absolutely demolished 
Yeah, you got five eggs. That makes more sense. Anyways, I got yeah, yeah. It was, it was fun. I appreciate. Um, yeah, I appreciate your comments. You, I, I like. Aster seems legit. Um, I enjoyed the combo. We're gonna go back through these coins, see what's going on. Yeah, listen to Aster well. I deserve a sub. Tia, still pretty trash. Inge, not awesome. I think this breaks up again. I've said that. I think this breaks up. It's just I don't know when. And like I'm now I'm hesitant. Like the obvious level to bid is a support down here, but it's been tested like eight times. So that's actually something I should talk about because a lot of people have this misconception that when a support is tested over and over again, that that's an indication that that level is strong. That is not how levels work. The reason levels work is because there's a certain number of people willing to buy at that level, whether it's limit bids set there or it's literally people on the sidelines who like come in and market buy when price gets to that level. When you retest the level over and over again, each time you come into there, you basically satisfy these people's buy wants, right? Like, like you got to think about, you know, once we set this level over here, basically there's like, let's just say there's like $10 million worth of $10 million that want to buy at this price. Right. And you come in here and like 3 million of those dollars get their buy. And then you come back in and another $2 million of those dollars get their buy. Then you come in again and another $2 million of those people get their buy. After you test it over and over again, everyone who wants to buy has bought. Like this whole idea that, you know, wow, it's held five times. That means it's never going to break. That's literally the opposite. Like the second test is always the best test because people who want to buy there, like no one has got their buy yet. So the, the buy pressure is more significant. What is the main strategy with 50K to invest, taking into account this ETF story, selling the positions if goes up 48 to 50K BTC and then buy back with some solid entry at strong levels? I think, yeah, I think if you want to, if you're holding your positions into the ETF um, and we get a pump into like 48, 50K ish, I think it'd be wise to sell there. Of course, you might be selling right before we go to 60K. But you have to always think about risk reward. And if you are selling like basically this high over here, you're selling at 48, 50K, you know, your risk is that it goes up to 60. So your risk is like 20% move, 25% move. Cause I think there's very low chance that we break all time high, you know, in the next month. Like that would, that's to me like one of the least likely outcomes. Um, and what you're risking is that this is, <clears throat> is that we pull back from 50K to like 35k which is 25 percent downside 25 percent downside is way worse than 25 percent upside is good so i think risk reward is great if you are selling um, an etf news driven pump to 50k um obviously you have to make this decision for yourself all i can tell you is what i would do and if i held positions into the etf and we pump to 50k you know, like the day of or something ridiculous, like very fast move, like the faster the move, the more eager I would be to sell it. If we just like grind up into it, that's a little different. But if we like impulse move into 58K, I mean, 48, 50K, I personally would sell and just sort of reevaluate, like just take a week off from the market and just come back and be like, okay, what's going on here? The ETF has been approved. You know, what do the inflows look like? You can reevaluate at that point. But um, I think it. I think that you would just classify that as a high risk scenario. Like, let's say the day after the ETF, we pump into 50k. That's just a high risk moment. Um, what does it mean? If so, what are the main bets in terms of coins with that budget strategy with 50k to invest, taking into account this ETF story? Um, you're going to hate this, um, this advice, CDROM, but if the BTC, if the ETF is approved and we pull back, you're not going to want to allocate capital for a decent period of time. It's not like the ETF is going to be approved. We pull back to 35K the next week and then you ape it 
and then a month later we're back up at 60k i don't think it's gonna happen that way i think we're gonna consolidate for a while so i would i suggest you go look at like um 2020 price action you can kind of ignore the COVID crash because that was like a black swan anomaly so don't i wouldn't necessarily you know look at that crash and be like oh well, we must have a crash that's just like that but look at 20 study 2020 price action because in terms of the cycles 2024 is the equivalent to 2020 it's the having year um etc so that's that's sort of the basis of my plan is um i don't think we see a new all-time high on bitcoin until q4 and if we're at you know if we're at 48k right now the etf gets approved and i'm saying i don't think we see 60k until q4 well that's a that's a whole lot of time of not super bullish price action like it's at least it's sideways chop at best which would allow like altcoins to run or it's giga dumping to like 30k at worst right so i would say be care just uh be patient after the etf is approved um and form a plan after that but i i have it in my mind that i will probably allocate um capital um like q2 most likely so that's kind of bearish i know nobody wants to hear that but i'm just being honest that's my expectations do you hold any icp i don't hold any icp icp is apparently like the it's just like the the crypto of youtube like everyone on youtube just loves icp for whatever reason i'm not a big fan of icp um the launch of that thing was one of the most abysmal launches of all time everyone who bought lost like 95 percent a week or something absurd like it literally launched it what it launched at like 500 dollars or something didn't it so that right now 12 let me pull this up because this is this is insane was it like the uh i wonder if it was the perps it's probably the perps that had that insane yeah <laughs> this is what like this launch was horrendous bro they launched it what i say 500 okay 450 like people got demolished i will say this chart looks good okay well okay it doesn't look good right now because it ran into weekly resistance and it's you know getting halted but yeah why did i say it looks good it doesn't look good um like it i mean if you wanted to be in this thing you wanted to front run this weekly breakout so it's like the move is in and i wouldn't buy this thing personally if it until it pulled back to like 7.4 ish well you probably had to front run that you probably won't get 7.4 i probably wouldn't buy it until something like 8.3 ish but i'm just i'm not gonna buy icp i'm not the biggest fan of icp um i don't think like it's a an awesome technological like product um the only people i know that buy icp are like crypto youtubers um and i don't classify crypto youtubers as some of the most sophisticated investors in crypto um so i'm not i'm not real bullish icp i'm sorry i know again nobody wants to hear that everyone watching the stream probably loves icp and i'm trash talking your bags i'm sorry but i'm just being honest um and it's not even that i, I mean icp is going to go up right we're going to see a bull market icp is i bet icp goes to 100 bucks like it's going to it's going to moon but so is everything else and so in crypto like the question's never will it go up because everything will go up literally eos from like freaking 2015 is going to go up right like everything is the question is like what's going to go up most and what's the best risk reward and i think basically every single asset in this watching basket that i have right here is a better hold than icp i'd rather have tia Inge, say soul render mina prime dydx op Gito, blur even these meme coins are probably I, I i'm not going to include those meme coins but literally every asset here i'd rather hold than icp so icp is going to go up but i don't think it's going to be as good of an investment as these other coins um Will this live be watchable later because I got to go? Um, yeah, I this is my first live, so I assume that I can make this thing like available to watch later on my channel. I'm hoping so. Um, so yeah, you ought to be able to watch later. Um, if so, what are the bets? I'm following your goal. I'm following your goal and have a similar one. Yeah, talking about the 50K to a million dollar challenge. I would be very, I would not recommend you aim for a million dollars with a $50,000 portfolio. Um, this challenge that I'm doing is me documenting my own personal challenge. Um, 
and it's like a separate, it's like not my main portfolio. This is like a, a specific side account I've made for just to do this challenge, like to document it on YouTube because it would be cool. But like I'm, I trade my main account entirely differently than the challenge account. Like the challenge account does not resemble my main account whatsoever. First, I don't even use Coinbase on my main account and I only use Coinbase on the challenge account. All of my trading for the most part, well, okay. 80% of my portfolio is on chain on my main account. It's like in, you know, MetaMask wallet and I'm on like all the different chains and whatnot. It's all decentralized stuff. Um, and then I like, I margin trade a little bit, but that's like, I don't recommend anybody margin trade either, but I do it because I found it to be profitable for myself. But again, I wouldn't recommend anybody set the goal of 50K to a mil unless you were here um, 2020 or earlier. Because, like, the likelihood that you're going to 20x your portfolio um, and, like, actually lock in the 20x, like, you might get to an unrealized 20x at some point. Um, but the likelihood that you're going to, like, sell and exit the market at a 20x is near zero. And you're probably just going to be in too high risk of assets because you're trying to 20x your portfolio. And, therefore, those assets are going to pull back, like, 80%. You're going to get shrecked. So I don't, I don't recommend trying to um, do what I'm doing. Um, yeah, Astor Whale mentioned Monad and Eigenlayer. I, I concur. Uh, those are launches coming up soon that I recommend keeping an eye on. Solid long-term alts. There's plenty of them. In my opinion, the time to buy Bitcoin was at the bear market lows. It was at the bear market lows, and it will also be, I believe, in Q2-ish of this year. Um, cause it's going to go down to like 35 K if I had to guess, maybe 32 K and people are going to buy altcoins when they think Bitcoin's bottomed and then Bitcoin's going to pump, but their alts going to keep going down and it's going to be painful to people who buy alts. So I think, you know, we see these like Bitcoin dominance rotations where Bitcoin pumps and it takes time for capital to flow into all these other assets. And, um, we're just going to see another cycle of that. I don't think like that. I don't think that has happened for the bull market. Like there, there's going to be another, it's shorter time frame basically. It's not like that happened. And like for the next two years, alts are going to run while Bitcoin underperforms. We're going to reset again after Bitcoin pulls back and then rerun that same pattern. The next one I think will be the one where you hold alts basically forever. Cause like not forever, obviously you should sell all your stuff by the end of 2025. If you don't sell all your assets by the end of 2025, you're going to get demolished. But you can hold them, you know, into 2025 and for like, you know, 100 X's and insane gains and whatever. Rose, is Rose the, um, I'm familiar with Rose a little bit. I know it's not the Rose that's on near. Yeah, Oasis. Yeah, Oasis has been around. I assume this is what you're talking about. Or is it? Yeah, I assume you're talking about Oasis. Yeah, I, I'm relatively familiar with Oasis. Um, I know people were pretty bullish on it, like. It must have pumped or something because there was a lot of talk about it a while back. Yeah, Oasis. Um, I mean, I would like to ask you what you think your target is for it, though, because it's like it's nearing a billion dollar market cap. So, like, I mean, what, do you think this thing hits like 25 bill? So you can hit like a 30, it's like a 30 X ish. Um, I don't know. Maybe it hits 25 bill or maybe you don't care to hit a 25 X. Maybe you think maybe you're just very confident it hits like eight bill $1. So that's like a, was that like a, I don't do, I shouldn't be doing math on a live stream. That's like nothing but negatives can come from that. Um, so you think there's like a, something like a 10 X nine X, something like that. I mean, maybe, but so like my counter to that would be that I think a 10 X from here, I think you have that same upside in Solana. Like if Solana is what everyone thinks it is and it's going to like actually go to new all time highs in the next cycle, be like, you know, the first altcoin basically, or like the second altcoin after Ethereum to, you know, pump in one cycle and go to a new all time high in the next cycle. Um, I mean, you're talking about like a thousand dollar price target. So like that same upside, you can probably find a Solana. And I think the downside is probably, probably better with Solana.
Um, think that newbies aiming for a 7 to 10 X overall in their portfolio is a huge win. Honestly, too many people have fallen victim to the 100 X on the rest of the games from YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I mean, people get way too overinflated expectations around their portfolio. Um, and in reality, most people lose their money. Like, that's just a fact. Not only are you not probably going to like 20 X your portfolio, you're probably going to lose money. Like, like, I'm not even saying you're not going to 20 exit. You're only going to 10 exit. And I'm like bearish. You know, I'm, I'm annoying because I'm saying you're not going to hit your 20 X like you want. Cause you're only going to 10 extra portfolio. You're probably going to lose your money. Like that's just, that's just how it goes. It, it happens over and over and over again. Hi from Germany. What do you think about Prisma? I'm not familiar with Prisma. Prisma. Ooh. Oh, I misspelled it. No wonder it didn't come up. Prisma governance, convex Prisma. Um, 16 mil, bro. Are you shilling a $16 million market cap token in here? <laughs> I'm not going to comment on this most likely because, um, that's insanely small market cap, but fully diluted is, Ooh, so this sucker has got like super low float, 16 mil market cap with 300, it's got like 5% float, right? Yeah, only 5% float. Did it launch recently? No. Or yeah. Okay. So this thing's gotten demolished. Why has it gotten demolished? It's a question I would have. Because it's down, it's down massive. We'll pull it, see if we can pull it up on here. Of course, it's on the the holy Mexi. We'll chart it, see what's up. I mean, that chart's that's chart that chart's not right. I can't really go off it. So, I mean, it launched at like ten bucks and it's sitting at one, so it's down like ninety percent in two months. I'm no, I'm I i would not mess with anything like this, bro. It launched two months ago. Literally two months ago. And it's down 90% while Bitcoin and everything else in the market has giga pump. I would, I'm not, I wouldn't advise anyone to touch this thing. Sorry. Uh, oh, wait, is this one bill? And for five cents low was at about three. So as BTC goes up, alts should go up eventually, right? But you're saying post this ETF, BTC is likely to dump and alts run for a short period. That's so to be clear, the coldest. Nobody freaking knows what's going to happen after this ETF is approved. Like it is one of the most unpredictable moments that you're going to see. Um, that is my guess as to the highest probability outcome is that um, we basically see like a miniature cycle top right now as the ETF gets approved um, and Bitcoin, you know, chops and goes downward and we see Ethereum sort of catch up because Ethereum's gotten demolished against Bitcoin this year. It's been like a, a hilarious situation where ETH has just gotten wrecked versus Bitcoin. Um, so ETH catches up a bit as the narrative shifts towards the ETH ETF now that we have the B, uh, BTC ETF. Um, and if ETH pumps to like 3K-ish, I'll show you what I expect if this plays out. Um, we're talking about ETH going to like 3 probably going up into here, three, 3,300 ish, maybe, maybe. Um, I think we almost definitely take out this 2,500 level. And if either of those happen, all it's are going to pump really hard. Um, what was the rest of your question for a short period of time? What's rational for that? If you have time. Okay. Yeah. I think I just kind of explained my rationale. Um, it's, it's basically the shift in narrative. So the Bitcoin ETF we've pumped. Oh, this is ETH. So we've pumped um, based on the expectation of the ETF approval. The ETF is going to get approved. I think we pump for a short period of time and then we sell the news um, and chop around for a little bit. Um, then the narrative becomes like the next big catalyst in crypto becomes we have the halving coming up. But outside of that, I think the next biggest catalyst would, you know, the attention would shift to an ETH ETF. So then we see ETH pump, um, but ultimately, Bitcoin is going to going to drag everything down as it chops downward. Um, 
and as ETH pumps, you know, as that, as I just said, as the narrative shifts to ETH, ETH pumps, and then alts are going to pump with it. Cause that's just how it goes. So a lot of these alts are going to go up like 50%, hundred percent, et cetera. Um, and I'm going to try to catch those on short term trades. Like I'm going to, like I mentioned earlier, I do some margin trading. I don't recommend anyone do it, but I do it. I'll margin trade all of that. Like it's going to be, it's going to be insane to margin trade, but, um, but I would like, the challenge account we have that's like 50k to a mil challenge account um i don't have it up on the screen or i'd show you but um maybe i can go i think i can get it actually let me pull it up um i'm trying to not okay here we go so basically in this account like we only hold spot and it's like mid to high time frame bets. So like in this account, we chose to not hold into the event because we think it's unpredictable. It's high risk. We could miss out on gains, of course. Like that's so possible. But uh, the risk is just not worth it for us. So like in this type of, it depends on like what your strategy is, right? Like in this account, I don't think it's worth holding into the event. However, like I just said, I'm going to margin trade the crap out of this event because it's going to be there's going to be so much volatility and opportunity. Um, should I buy ETH instead for now instead of BTC? I, oof, it's so tough, man. I'm, I'm sitting here talking about how um, like the ETH narrative makes sense. And, like the shift towards the ETH ETF makes sense. And then the ETH BTC chart looks abysmal. Like this is ETH versus Bitcoin. And it looks horrendous. It's been in a downtrend for a year over a year and it like the last hope we had was that this high time frame trend line right here was going to hold and we we tested it and bounced broke below it and then we just barely retested it and it looks pretty horrendous so again this is why i just think holding nothing and letting the event play out let the dust settle is the ideal play you might miss upside you also might be so glad because you avoid downside it's just so unpredictable. I'm just going to chill. I'm just going to chill and let it happen. Um, so I can't I can't sit here and recommend that you buy ETH right now. You can do what you want. If you think, you know, if you buy into the narrative shift that I mentioned a minute ago and you want to ignore the ETH BTC chart, go for it. Um, I'm not going to hold ETH. I hold no ETH. I'm not going to buy any ETH. Um, Prism being shilled hard by Crypto Cousin. Yeah. Um, I used to watch some crypto cousin stuff back in the day. That's that's kind of wild that he's shilling something that's 16 mil market cap with 5% float. He's probably getting unlocks like so the 5% float that basically means that only 5% of the total supply is actually out in the market, which means there's 95% of the um sorry, I see someone mentioning Omen Wonderland. I'll talk I'll respond to that in a minute. So basically it means like 95% of the supply is going to come into the market over some period of time. I don't know what the unlock schedule is for Prisma specifically, but basically the supply is going to 20 X over some period of time. So for you to, if you, if you hold it right now, the buy, the buy pressure has to be 20 X in order for you to just maintain your holding value. So like, um, because the supply is also going to go up by 20x. So if 20%, uh, you know, oh my gosh, what am I saying? So like, I think I just said it. I don't know how else to say it. The buy pressure has to 20x for you to just maintain your holding value if the supply 20x is as well. So never, never really great to uh, be in a trade like that. Mask network. Y'all are asking about all these weird things that I've never heard of. Mask network. Sup a lot today. Congrats, brother. Sup 30% today. Um, ooh, that looks good. When did it launch? It launched in 2021, so I'm not going to be a fan. I can go ahead and tell you. Um, I'm not a fan just by default. If it was around in the last bull market, and I mean like it, like a significant part of the bull market, parallel prime that I mentioned earlier, it was like launched sort of the ends and it didn't have a token yet. Like the prime token didn't exist. So that's why that's an exception. Um, but like 
the fact that this thing was around and it's been decimated too many bag holders i'm not i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to hold anything like that there's just too many other things right like i'm not even saying mask is a bad thing to hold like it's going to not go up there's just too many like there's legit good innovative tech being launched like quarter after like month after month right now like monad launches next quarter eigenlayer launched last quarter i mean next quarter say recently launched celestia recently launched like there's just too many good things like while well, i just there's just too many good things to hold to hold something that's mediocre um have you heard of sinkus dow um have you heard of sinkus dow it's a mixture between ohm wonderland and save moon i have not heard of it i don't think now is the time to be buying uh ponzi tokens there's gonna be a time for it i'm not i'm not anti-ponzi but you you say it's own wonderland and safe moon those are three outright ponzi schemes like like they aren't you know technology companies whatsoever they're just straight up a, a ponzi uh, wonderland and ohm were actually two of my biggest plays i made six figures off of both of those last cycle um and i can't remember what i made on wonderland i shouldn't say i made six figures because I sized too small, but I like I at least like 35x on Wonderland. I sized smaller. So it wasn't it wasn't that big of a win if I remember right. But anyways, those are Ponzi's. Ponzi's are a late cycle phenomenon. Like you sh you you want to look at Ponzi's like late 2025. That's when people are just like so degenerate that they'll just buy stuff that literally has no fundamental value whatsoever. Um. So I'm not I'm not really in Ponzi buying mode at the moment. Have you seen Tellor? Yeah yeah yeah. TRB, I would not, I would completely stay away from Teller. Teller, if you aren't familiar, is, uh, that's the name of the thing, but it's the tokens TRB. And basically what's going on with Teller is that there's a fund that owns like all the supply and they just manipulate the absolute mess out of this market. So you just see like complete tomfoolery where like this thing went up to s almost $600. So this is a single daily candle that went from so it opened where did it, open? it opened at 300 it pumped 100 percent to almost 600 and then it ultimately dumped back down within one daily candle from 600 to 150 70 percent so 100 percent pump into a 70 percent dump this is it's just like it's like outright manipulation if this was in like a in like equities these people would be arrested but it's crypto so it, it flies so I, I would not touch this whatsoever you're just gonna get like they literally they literally make price do what it wants so there's no chance they're gonna let you walk away with any profit um thanks man can you comment limewire y'all what are these projects if it existed in 2021 oh LimeWire? Bro. Wait, what is it called? LimeWire? You must be meaning LimeWire. This thing. I, I remember seeing this. I'm almost positive this was around in 2021 because I remember it. Oh, maybe not. Did it launch in 2023? LimeWire. How do I know about this? Super small, bro. Super small, 30 mil. I can't really comment on something that's 30 mil right now. Um, What are your 10 coins to have a decent return in two years? Planning to hold for the time being. 10 coins. Um, So the hard thing about saying coins that are, like for me to make a prediction on a coin right now is just kind of silly because I'll give you some. Okay, I'm going to give you some coins that I like, but there's, a ton of projects that are going to launch in 2024. So like a lot of my favorite projects for 2025 haven't even launched yet. Like Monad hasn't launched yet. That could end up being one of my favorites. Eigenlayer hasn't launched yet. Could end up being one of my favorites. Um, there's all these things launching that could end up being insanely good holds. Um, so it's, it's kind of silly to like right now, just like say right now, I'm just going to deploy my money into these altcoins and sit back and relax and just watch. Cause like, it's going to like, they're going to cycle in and out over the next year. And I don't think you want to just like be stale basically. Let me make sure. Still holding. So we're, we're chilling there. Um, but, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you asked for some, um, I like Celestia. I like injective. I like say network. Say is basically the same product as Monad that I just mentioned a minute ago. So Monad's going to launch in Q1. 
you if you are gonna like be involved in either you need to pay attention to both so like i'm bullish say but when monad launches i'm gonna have to be very careful because it's possible that monad siphons attention from say uh, solana i'm pretty bullish solana for the next cycle render or any ai play for the most part i'm super bullish any ai token again though like the good ai projects haven't launched yet most of the existing AI projects are pretty weak so in 2024 there's a whole bunch of ai projects coming and a bunch of those are going to be the top performers but render is an ai asset you can consider echelon prime is my favorite long-term hold is my favorite because i think the upside is insane. Like I think it can go like $25 billion market cap and excuse me, $25 billion market cap is like nearly a hundred X. So it's, it's insane. Obviously I'm not calling for that. The likelihood that this thing hundred X is, is very small. If anyone ever says that something's likely to hundred X, they're out of their mind because a hundred X is by definition unlikely to happen. But this is the only bet in my portfolio that I think has that potential. Literally not a single coin that I, there's not a single coin I know of that has as good a likelihood to do it as Prime. I guess that's the way I should put it. Optimism. I think Optimism is going to perform great. It's going to be, um, it's basically the back end of base chain, Coinbase chain. So Coinbase basically partnered with OP. And so if you are bullish on base chain, you like kind of by proxy are bullish Optimism. I think Optimism is going to perform well. I think Arbitrum is going to perform well. Uh, Sui probably performs well. All these new L1s are probably just going to do well. Um, it's like running back the exact same thing as last cycle. These L1s are going to do well, mostly just because Ethereum still hasn't solved the gas fee issue. Um, still, though, as I mentioned, I'm bullish on the L2s, like Arbitrum and OP. Uh, I'm pretty bullish on those. So, I don't know. Those are some coins to consider um, for like decent returns. Again, though, the best the best returns are from projects that haven't launched yet, almost certainly. Um, Matt, yeah, you hold Magic as a gaming play. Yeah, Magic's pretty good. Um, if you want some gaming, if you want to like keep up with the gaming space, my friend Rick Rosschain, Rick Crosschain. What? Oh, wait. Yeah, Rick Crosschain. So he works on he's like the co-founder of gg quest with a guy named days as well and he basically knows like every single thing that's going on in the gaming space um so i suggest following him um he kind of he kind of lets me know what's going on with all the all the gaming stuff um so i suggest giving him a follow he's small obviously i mean he's big got more followers than me so it's hilarious for me to call him small but you know relatively 2300 followers isn't that big um, and then his co-founder is Days, who uh, good follow as well. I suggest you follow both of them. They know what they're talking about. Um, um, yeah, Elijah, you're, you're holding Tia. Yeah, so Tia on low time frame looks pretty rough. I mentioned it earlier. Like I think we, I think we're fairly likely to see eleven point six again. And I think at the lowest, we see something like 8.5. But if you're staking it, so you're eligible for airdrops to Tia, to Tia stakers, um, it might be worth, like, I'm not going to unstake. Even though I'm pretty, I, I think this chart looks bad. I think we see downside. I'm not, like, unstaking my Tia and trying to sell it. One, you can't do it for 21 days. So, you know, you finally get your Tia out and price is already at the bottom. So who cares? Um, but I also think that the airdrop potential is just worth withstanding potential downside like this I need to pick up Tia and Angela debating waiting for a crash we'll stake them of course yeah that's a really tough decision given where we are in the market right now like should you just just hop in and just buy Tia and engine I say engine sometimes but it's injective Inge right now like I don't know <laughs> it's just a hard decision this is why uh this is why it's best to just buy low because then you, uh, your decisions are much easier. You don't have to decide if you want to buy this thing after it's up so much. And the, you know, the bullish catalyst is just a few days away. Um, I personally will be waiting. I'm going to play things short term, as I mentioned earlier. Like I'll, I might, you know, margin long inch around the uh, ETF and stuff to try to catch some moves. But in terms of like if I were trying to place a 12 month long bet, I wouldn't be placing those bets right now because I think we, we, we like we're going to see blood at some point in the next 12 months. Right. 
like even if blood is from higher like engine injective goes to like 60 and then it sees like a 40 percent pullback that 40 percent pullback is an easier buy than it is right now um even if you miss upside um how to get into mo nat and q2 um follow them on twitter and you'll like sort of see the updates that are come to the project it's mo nad m-o-n-a-d -E. um so i would i would follow them put them on alerts and um, keep up with what they're doing i don't I actually haven't seen how they're going to launch their token so i'm sure it's out there but i know it's far away so i haven't really paid much attention to how they're actually going to launch the token but just um follow them on twitter and keep up with what they're doing scroll up and chat about insp brother this could be a ripper insp inspect mate market cap isn't even on here <laughs> pretty new though i like that where is it it's on deck screener having an open deck screener which is probably a good thing because trying to keep this stuff at least relatively non-degen inspect 24 days old one month old. It's on ETH. Yeah, I mean, it's accumulating down here. So you could see it sort of curl up and pump at some point. What is Inspect? Inspect serves as a cornerstone of Web3, introducing an innovative layer two solution specifically crafted to enrich users' experiences across expansive social ecosystems like Twitter as the inaugural layer two infrastructure for X. So it's like a it's like a L2 that it interacts with Twitter. Yeah, you, that's what you're saying. Layer two for Twitter. Big names like Pintoshi, been accumulating. Um, I don't want to. I want to see your cap table. Instantly turn X to a Web three platform. Oh, it's like a layer over top of. Oh, that's kind of interesting, actually. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So like a. Uh, BNB. I wish there was a demo. Cause like, what do you you like take a trade on? Like like kind of overlaid on the X interface run. They own make it a quote on Twitter as well. Um, trying to find their investors. You mentioned Pintoshi. Uh, it's, I don't know where they are. It's a browser extension, yet they call it a layer two. It's kind of weird, honestly, but I can, I mean, so this to me feels like a pretty late cycle thing as well. Like just trade directly on um, Twitter. Like you're, you're on Twitter and then you have this sort of Chrome extension overlay that lets you like execute transactions and stuff. I can see that. So what did we say the market cap was? Oh, at least FTV is 169. Do you know what the circulating is, Astor Whale? You still at all cash. I assume you mean in all cash. And the um, the challenge account is all cash. It's 80% cash. So we still have 18% allocated into Prime, um, which we're not going to sell at all. It's about 29 mil. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I kind of get it. Coin market cap. I hate coin market cap. What was it? The INSP. Yeah, twenty-seven mil. An investor list for you. Have a pick on Twitter. Yeah, we can. See what people are saying. 
my Twitter search is all screwed up. I used to use Twimex and um and um oh has Trader NG one been shilling this thing? Yeah, yeah, I know I can search the ticker, but a lot of times people don't include that. Um, thrilled to unveil our integration with Sanit Harsing, their unique automation. Yeah, okay. A lot of my friends follow them. It seems pretty legit. I kind of get it. I don't necessarily know if, like, now's the time, but I could see, uh, I can see this being a, uh, see, I can see it pumping at some point. Yeah, lots of people I like follow them. <laughs> Worth keeping an eye on for sure. Capo? Like crypto capo? With a C? You put a K. Do you mean with a C? Because that's pretty sus. <laughs> um, you still at all cash. Sorry, yeah, I think I was in the middle of answering that. Yeah, we're 80% cash. We only hold prime. What we sold was say and tia so the say the say exit ended up looking beautiful we sold 77 this is some other trade i mentioned earlier in the stream but we sold 77 um so we're down something like 15 percent from where we exited i think we're going to go down to like 0.55 ish 0.56 so we will have snagged like 26 percent uh, on that sell and then tia like i mentioned that one was not so clean uh we sold actually right before the impulse move up which sucked that was like a 30 percent day I caught this on my personal account. It's actually a huge position. It was it was far too big. I like didn't follow my risk parameters, and I caught this huge. I was just super confident in it, so I that's what I did. But but yeah, it sucked on the challenge account. We missed like a thirty percent move, and I could have sold up here. And I sold on my personal account at uh, sixteen point two five, which is right there, which is effectively the top. So if I had just done the same on the challenge account, we would have. I mean, it was not that big of a deal. We would have made like an extra 3K. So that would have been nice. But, I mean, really doesn't compare to the gains that we made on Say. That was, we made 23K on Say. I would say the Miss Chiller's been K-A-P-O. Do you mean, are you talking about, who's K-A-P-O? Shahid? There's no way you're talking about these guys, right? When are you planning to get back in again on the challenge count? Uh, after we'll just have to wait and see after the ETF is approved. We'll like watch everything play out and sort of form a thesis at that point. I think it'll probably be like a couple months to be honest with you, which I know is boring, but um, this account is like a high time frame focused account, right? Like I want to wait till I can deploy the capital and then hold it for a year, because that's that's literally what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait for. Bitcoin to go down to like 35, 32K. At least that's what I expect to happen. We'll be agile. And if it doesn't do that, then we'll adjust. But um, the plan is to let it go down to like 32, 35K. And uh, we might buy ETH or something at that point. I don't really know though. Um, it's really silly for me to like uh, predict from this far out. We're just going to let the ETF play out and then we will reanalyze um, after that, all after the dust settles. I just realized we're coming up on like two hours of the stream. I got to get off and eat something. Um, but this was fun. I didn't know how this was going to go. I literally just figured out how to even do this like right before I got on. So, uh, we'll do this again sometime. It's pretty fun to, uh, like research coins and stuff live and also talk about these potential trades that are happening. Jito, Jito is acting like it wants to reclaim this level again. We'll just have to wait and see if it does it. Um, I, mean, I might end up taking that, but. Nonetheless, appreciate everybody being here. Uh, if you haven't watched the uh, 50k down mill challenge videos, I suggest you subscribe and check those out. They'll, they're pretty fun. All right. I'm going to go eat something. Appreciate it.